What do you think are some specific challenges men face today that could be keeping them from their potential? I think part of the fall from, from the first sin of Adam and Eve is men want to be like women and women want to be like men. You see a lot of times where women want to be leading the, the, the marriage and they want to be the head of the household and the man, you know, it's the, the Homer Simpson, sit on the couch, drink beer and just watch TV and just let everything go on around me and I'm not really at the, at the center of what's even going on in my household. So, you know, I'm very passionate about encouraging men to, to be courageous, to not be afraid to be the leader. It's something that we struggle with, I think, a lot of times to, to go outside of our comfort zone and to say, you know what, God has called me to be a leader and to lead by example. I'm going to lead my household and I'm going to lead um, outside the world when I'm evangelizing. So that's something that I'm very passionate about. And I think more men need to not care about what the world says about them. They need to have strong men that support them with iron sharpening iron, and they need to be encouraged that, that God was, Jesus Christ was radical, and he said a lot of things that weren't liked, and he wasn't loved, but at the end of the day, he stood for truth, and I think men cannot be afraid and cannot waver, and they need to stand for truth. All right, guys, we got to talk about this pretty amazing interview that I stumbled across featuring Kansas City Chiefs football player, Mr. Harrison Butker, okay, and Mr. Butker is talking about his faith, he's talking about family, he's talking about his relationship with God, he's talking about his traditional Catholic values. It really is a, a great interview, I'm actually going to post the link in the description for any of you guys who want to watch the whole interview, but there was one portion of the interview that I really want to talk about, and I kind of talked about this earlier today, uh, when I talked about um, Elon Musk and Don Lemon talking about racism, how the left blames everything in society on racism. I briefly talked about how uh, the cause of our problems in society, particularly when you look at the lack of economic attainment and uh, the crime problem, the crime issue of certain demographics, aka black people, in our society. Racism is not the reason why black people struggle to achieve socioeconomic mobility. It really comes down to culture, right? And the collapse of the traditional family structure. And when you look at crime, okay, crime is a direct result of that because a lot of these young black men who commit these crimes, who uh, become a part of the uh, criminal justice system, uh, they don't have a father in the household to teach them discipline, how to be a man, and most importantly, how to control your emotions as a man when you are dealing with conflict okay and i really do believe that that is why you see so much crime in these black communities is because of the lack of fathers in homes in order to teach young men how to deal with conflict in other men and i don't want anybody to get it twisted and try to say that well this video is just about black people because it's really not uh, the fatherlessness problem is existent across racial demographics. I mean, you have uh, about 20% of white families uh, that uh, do not have a father as the head of the household. But again, we have to admit that it affects black people, Latinos and Native Americans more so than whites and Asians. And when you look at the fatherlessness statistics uh, and then you look at crime and you look at other problems like socioeconomic mobility, I mean, there's a strong, strong, strong correlation. So when the woke revolutionaries complain about why this group or that group is behind, why this group or that group is ahead of everybody else, why whites and Asians are outperforming uh, everybody else, well, just look at the fatherlessness statistics, right? And when you look at those statistics and see which groups have the highest rates of fatherlessness, uh, you'll quickly figure out why uh, some groups have more issues uh, with socioeconomic mobility and crime and other problems uh, than others, right? It's really not that hard to figure out. It's not rocket science, okay? The nuclear family is the key to uh, success. It is the um, most powerful form of governance that we have in our society. And the reason why this is related to what I'm about to talk about here is because we have to revisit the Super Bowl mass shooting, okay? As you guys know, the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl, and Mr. Harrison Buckner was asked about the Kansas City Chief uh, Super Bowl mass shooting and uh, what was the cause of that mass shooting. Uh, what should we do about gun violence in this country? And his answer is spot on, especially when it comes to this specific situation. Take a look. There is a debate in this country over the best way to curb gun violence after being so close to it. Yeah. Any thoughts? 
Yeah, um, you know, I had to do a lot of, of thinking about the what took place at the parade. I know gun violence was a big discussion, but at the end of the day, this is degenerate violence and it should not be occurring. I think we need strong fathers in the home. I think we men that are we need men that are leading, that are setting good examples, that are teaching the young men in our society that violence is not the way to handle our disputes. It's very unfortunate what happened. Unfortunately, many, many children were injured. A beautiful young lady was killed over someone getting offended and turning to violence to handle that dispute. It's so sad. I don't think guns are the issue. I think we need fathers in the home that are being great examples for our youth. Facts. All facts. Nothing but facts. Okay. I wish that this interview was actually done with the mainstream liberal media, right? I wish it was done on a much larger network because his voice and what he said there needs to be projected, right? This is a conversation that we actually really have to get serious about, okay? And we have to figure this out as a society because I really do believe that what we're experiencing in regards to crime and chaos, particularly, again, in these liberal cities, is a result of the fatherlessness issue uh, in this country, okay? Because when you look at this mass shooting, okay, and what happened, uh, apparently there was a dispute uh, between two young scholars, one 18 years old, one 23 years old, happened to be black, okay? And the more you dig deeper into what led up to this conflict, uh, in the background of these individuals, it becomes clear that, again, Mr. Harrison Buckner is uh, on point in regards to his assessment of why this situation happened, and it doesn't really have anything to do with guns. And I'm going to play this news clip for you guys, and I want you guys to notice something when they start talking about these individuals and their families and what the men in their families have to say about what happened. Take a look. From KCTV5. At breaking news, we are getting our first look at one of the two men charged in the deadly shooting at the Chiefs Championship rally. Lindell Mays is 23 years old. The Jackson County Detention Center sent out his mugshot. The other man charged, Dominic Miller, is 18. His mugshot has not been released as of tonight. Both face multiple charges, including felony, second-degree murder, and Lisa Lopez Galvan's death. The Jackson County prosecutor says these men are strangers to each other, and more people may have been involved. We seek to hold every shooter accountable for their actions on that day. Every single one. So while we're not there yet on every single individual, we're going to get there. As for the two teenagers, we are told uh, were involved last week. They face gun-related and resisting arrest charges. Today, the prosecutor did not say if they are still in custody. I've been poring over the prob probable cause documents to find out exactly what led up to this shooting. Turns out Mays and Miller are strangers to each other. And according to police watching surveillance video, it all starts with Mays. Now, Mays claims a group of people told him, quote, I'm going to get you. And to him, that meant I'm going to kill you. So according to the probable cause documents, Mays starts to approach the individuals in an aggressive manner. After that, Lindell Mays circles behind a person and pulls out a handgun with his right hand and points it at one of the individuals. Now, at that point, no one else had pulled out a gun. Mays was shot, but later admitted to police while recovering in the hospital that he fired first, saying, quote, stupid man, just pulled a gun out and started shooting. I shouldn't have done that, just being stupid. As for Miller, it's not clear if he was with either group, but the documents say he watched the argument unfold, then started shooting after Mays. Documents also say Miller appears to trip over a cone while still shooting. Later, a ballistic report found the bullet from Miller's gun is the one that struck Lisa Lopez, leading to her death. Now, this isn't the first time Lindell Mays has gotten into trouble with a gun. KCTV5's Betsy Webster spoke with his uncle today, now joins us from the Jackson County Courthouse. Betsy, what have you learned? What has he told you? Yeah, well, first, Missouri court records show that Mays had just completed probation earlier this month for an altercation in Belton. That was a municipal charge. Tonight, his uncle and expressed his dismay about what he referred to as, quote, what's wrong with these youngsters nowadays. 
Yeah. Mesa's uncle is upset. In his words, the gunfire was, quote, uncalled for on both sides. Less than two weeks before this, Mays was released from probation, stemming from an incident that his uncle said involved a gun. Two years earlier, Mays was placed on probation after pleading guilty to a municipal charge of disorderly conduct in Belton. Mays' uncle says Mays pulled a gun outside the city's community center. He completed the probation on February 2nd of this year. Mays' uncle remarked that in 2020, a family member was murdered in a triple shooting that started as an argument, in his uncle's words, over a girl. Another man was also killed and a woman critically wounded. Mays' uncle speculated that Mays may have been jumpy because of that. Still, he added, it's no justification for what Mays is accused of doing here. Mays was at the rally with his sister, his uncle said, and invited him to join. He declined and now wonders if he could have prevented it if he'd been there. I also visited with 18-year-old Dominic Miller's grandfather. He politely declined to talk about him, saying that he did not want to do anything to jeopardize the case. Live in Kansas City, Missouri, Betsy Webster, KCTV 5 News. Betsy, thank you. Yeah, so you see, now you heard that. What did you guys pick up from that news clip? What did you guys pick up? Both suspects in this shooting uh, do not have a father in sight, right? When the news clip went to ask the men of the family what their thoughts were on the suspects being involved, you had one that had an uncle, okay, that spoke, and then you had the other one where they talked to the grandfather. Okay, well, again, where's where's the father? Okay, ne neither one of these individuals have fathers, and I guarantee you the other young scholars that were involved in this because, I mean, they say that uh, there were other young people, juveniles that were involved that they don't want to reveal their identities for obvious reasons. We all know why. Guarantee you they don't have a father. Guarantee you the other individuals uh, who may have been involved in the shooting because apparently up to six people were involved in the shooting, right? Um, probably don't have a father either. Now, I'm not saying that one or two of them might not, but, you know, hey, most likely, statistically speaking, they probably don't because had they had a father, particularly the, the guy Miller, who seems to have an issue with his emotions. Like, for example, he has a history of pulling out a gun uh, over an argument, okay? I mean, he had already been on probation for that. Um, had he had a father in the household to teach him how to control his emotions and how to deal with these types of conflicts without pulling out guns on people and, you know, threatening people or, you know, shooting people, um, he probably would not have been in this situation. He probably would not have been living the life that he was living up until this point, okay? And that is kind of the point of this video, that what we're seeing happening in these inner liberal cities, all of the violence is a result of the broken household, the broken family. I don't care how you try to dodge the issue, it's always going to come back to that. And it's a shame that we're not talking about this enough, but instead the mainstream liberal media would much rather Talk about taking away your rights <laughs> rather than the broken family structure, okay? Because fixing the broken family structure uh, is going to do more wonders for society than any type of government program or taking away people's guns. Taking away people's guns is not going to fix the uh, emotional issues that a lot of these young scholars have that lead to this type of violence, okay? Because again, statistically speaking, you know, children without fathers, they just do a lot worse. Now, this is from the America First Policy Institute, which is a policy institute that we should reference a lot more, a think tank that should be referenced a lot more. This is our own homegrown uh, research <laughs> done by people leading the America First movement, right? According to them, some data suggests that 63% of youth suicides are from fatherless homes and 85% of children who exhibit behavioral disorders are from fatherless homes. Overall, data suggests that children from single parent families are twice as likely to suffer from mental health and behavior problems as those living with married parents. Again, why is that? Well, because, again, there's something about having a father there in order to teach a child how to deal with his emotions, to deal with the hardships of life, particularly men. OK, because men as men, 
as young boys, we deal with these trials and tribulations, and it's really tough to deal with, especially when you don't have the guidance of a man. Now, when you multiply that by the fact that a lot of these young boys are living in poverty, okay, they're living in an environment where they see a lot of chaos, and then on top of that, you're living in a single parent household where you're with a woman who most likely is overly emotional, okay, there's a lot of estrogen, okay, in the building at all times. That is a recipe for disaster okay which again is why we're seeing what we say okay but when you talk about issues like you know depression and being suicidal yeah i mean having a father there having a man to talk to to walk you through these thoughts these feelings that you're having as a young man growing up again can be extremely beneficial because men have been adapted to dealing with hardship okay as a man it is your basically plight right to deal with hardship as a man you're supposed to have a hard life okay but again our culture is changing right where we're softening men up right we're essentially trying to put men in the same roles as women again that's something that uh mr buckner referenced is how again we are mixing up gender roles okay and that's a problem we're trying to feminize men. We're trying to make it okay for men to be soft and emotional and to express your feelings and take on all these feminine traits that, again, men, you're just not supposed to take on, okay? You, you, you're supposed to act different. But again, we're trying to socialize men to be women, okay? Or to take on the traits of women, more feminine traits in the name of gender equality, right? And vice versa for women. We're trying to make women more masculine. And again, that is a recipe for chaos okay which is why we're seeing what we're seeing happen in our society uh when you look at education as well too unsurprisingly those without a father in the home fare far worse in educational attainment than their two-parent counterparts some data shows that if fathers are not engaged children are twice as likely to drop out of school than children with both parents at home in a 2008 speech president barack obama stated that the, the number could even be much higher higher declaring that children who grow up without a father are nine times more likely to drop out of school additional data has shown that 71 percent of high school dropouts are from fatherless homes yeah again this is when obama actually really cared about the real issues in the black community he was actually speaking truth to power until he went woke again he started worrying about lgbtq issues and you know blaming systemic racism and capitulating to the woke activists he concluded that quote 10 percent of students living with both parents have never repeated a grade compared to uh, 20 percent living in step of father families 17 percent in stepmother families 18 percent in mother only families 16 percent in father only families and 21 percent living with neither parent okay um here we are fatherlessness and criminal activity this is the big one okay i mean i shouldn't have to go too deep into this for you guys to understand uh, that criminal activity and fatherlessness are closely related as well. Most adolescents who enter the juvenile system have suffered from parental abandonment, substance abuse, or a dysfunctional household. In a study of 75 juvenile delinquents, 66% experienced fatherlessness, 20% had never lived with their father, and 25% had an alcoholic father, aka bad father, right? Which is also an issue as well, too. Okay, I think a bad father is just as bad as no father, okay? Um, some data suggests that children without fathers in the home are 279% more likely to carry guns and deal drugs compared to peers living with their fathers in one study 70 percent of youth in state operated facilities were from single parent homes on the whole some data suggests that fatherless kids are 20 times more likely to be incarcerated other data suggests that children who are close to their fathers are 80 percent less likely to spend time in jail moreover 71 percent of teachers and 90 percent of law enforcement officials state that the lack of parental supervision at home is a major factor that contributes to violence in schools in a study of 56 school shootings only 10 of the shooters 18% were raised in a stable home with uh, both biological parents. 82% grew up in either an unstable family environment or grew up without both biological parents together. Well, that's the solution right there for mass shootings, right? That, that, that's your solution right there, okay? Your solution for poverty, fathers, two-parent homes. Your solution for crime, fathers, two-parent homes. Your solution for uh, education, uh, fathers, two-parent homes, and all of that is going to correlate to bigger and much better things for any group of people, whether you're talking about, um, you know, 
socioeconomic mobility, okay, um, or just general achievement. Uh, in general, again, fathers or having more fathers in homes, okay, having more responsible parents is, is really the solution to a vast majority of our problems, okay? And a vast majority of our problems can be traced back to fatherlessness, okay? So, again, when you saw that Super Bowl shooting, Okay, uh, the mainstream liberal media wants to talk about guns, right? They really didn't want to talk about it at all because the characters uh, didn't fit the narrative. But the real conversation we should have been having is about the background of these individuals and the fact that they don't have, um, you know, men, fathers in their lives that could have guided them uh, and taught them how to control their emotions and how to not end up in these types of situations. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black and perspective. Peace.